You killed it. Thanks. Hello, people on the interwebs. Today I am in Texas and I'm doing the Bronco Off Rodeo. It is being hosted by Bill Stein, the suspension company, and it is an instructional course that you get when you buy a new Bronco. So there is a bunch of brand new Ford Broncos out here and they have a bunch of courses to teach you how to properly use them off-road. And that's what we've been doing all day. So it's now lunchtime and this morning we went out and did some instructional drives where you go through the course and they teach you the basics of how to use the vehicle. I wasn't quite sure what to expect when I first arrived, but the staff at the event and the Bill Stein folks were incredibly kind-hearted, solid people, especially the man you hear giving instructions on the radio, who's known as the Hammer. It's a great job. Thanks. The trail guidance was given via walkie-talkie with a direct line of sight of your Bronco in a patient and confidence-inspiring manner that I feel would be easily comprehensible regardless of how much of a moron you are that brings penguins with you on a trail oh, in Jesus. Texas. You let off and slam oh, the brakes. So. so the crew I have with me right now are doing their part to keep Texas's lawns moisturized. It helps plants grow because it's what they crave. Urondo. Easy. Perfect. Good job, guys. Now, after lunch, we're gonna go do the more advanced stuff. But first, figure out go over the vehicle a little bit. Recently, I reviewed the Bronco Sport, which you see right in front of me, and the number one comment I got in the comments section was people mistaking this for the new Bronco. And I think that's because they named this Bronco Sport instead of Bronco Two, which I think would have been kind of ideal to name this thing the Bronco Two. This is not what I'm here to experience, although it is kind of cool to see these with some aftermarket modifications on them. But what I am actually here to experience is the real Bronco, which you see in front of me, which is actually something that I personally have on order. So they have just about every trim level of Bronco here, which is really nice in all the different colors. Unfortunately, they have no manual transmission Broncos here, which is what I ordered. So all the Broncos they had here are the 10 speed auto. You can get a 10 speed auto or a seven speed manual. Yes, seven speed. It's got a crawl speed built into it, which is really cool. This is dirty. This would drive me insane. It's gonna be hard for me to own an off-road vehicle. I'm always gonna be cleaning it. Anyway, this is the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6. You can also get it with a 2.3 EcoBoost with either the 10 speed auto or a seven speed manual, which is the best combination, obviously. But if you add any kind of options to the one with the seven speed manual, it forces you into a 10 speed. So that I kind of ran to that when I ordered mine. If you add anything, literally it's like, nope, you shall have 10 speed auto. I actually hired a model. Um, he's a male model. He's pretty good at it. So <laughs> he has a rabbit tattooed on the back of his arm. So oh, it's way I, I'm getting paid right now. <laughs> I drove this four door earlier today. This one was completely loaded with the 2.7 in it and all the bells and whistles. But now I'm going to switch out to his ass <laughs> and drive the two door. This one still also has the 2.7 V6 in it. I wanted to drive a 2.3 with a manual, but there just what isn't one. But at least this will give me an idea since it is a two door and that's what I have on order. Go, 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 go. You got bugs in the car? Yes. Shut up. <laughs> what? This is wild. Is it a YouTube? Oh my God. I cannot right now. I cannot believe this thing has video owner's manual. In case you were wondering, this happened. I'm glad that we don't have the sway bar disconnects in this one because I want it to be more challenging. It'll definitely be more challenging. That sway bar is pretty cool though, I will say. Like, yeah. The fact that like, it can be all loaded up and you just like hit the button, it's just like. I feel like I'm cheating. So I'm using the crawl control right now and it's set on one mile per hour. And I feel like this is cheating. I absolutely feel like this is cheating. I think this is great though if you've never done off-roading before. 
because it like I don't know kind of teaches you I guess what to do in a sense no break no break it's so unnatural to like let it do it it's like no I want to do it <laughs> And uh, because we have 14 vehicles with us, it's pretty much like a couple of people go through and then you wait for the pack to catch up and then you keep going again, which is really fun. I've never experienced something like this before. If you have a lot of friends, I recommend doing this. But uh, also if one of you gets stuck or blows up or dies, then you have a recovery vehicle, which is nice. That was a little bit more dramatized than it needed to be. Now I'm going to drive through a river. I have this in no modes. I just, it's in four low. Oh, stay still, penguin. This is fun. Okay, I'm gonna follow the same line. I'll lock my diffs. That made a world of difference using the lockers. I had them turned off just to see what it would do. It's kind of neat doing this and like having professionals around to explain each unique situation and what is like the best combination of modes to use. That's something I've never experienced before. And I think there's a lot of benefit in this course, even for people that think they're experienced off-roaders. It's, you can never, never hurts to keep learning more. That was so philosophical of me. That owner of hand frowned, but I put it in two wheel drive and just did a huge Bernie Sanders right here on this boy. Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Most normal people would be taking this as a rest break. What does Sarah do? I look in the swampy water to see what kind of fish are in here. Oh, there's dragonflies. Lots of dragonflies. There's two dragonflies having sex. Oh wait, no, that's one. What is that? He has a fish cannon. It's a cannon that shoots shit to fish to eat. That's amazing. I wanna stick my feet in there and get a foot massage. Wow, oh, those are huge catfish. Since I don't have a garage science opportunity in this because there's no lifts in the middle of the hill country of Texas, nor do I have a lab coat out here or would I wanna wear a lab coat because it's hot as fuck out here. Uh, I am going to incorporate some science. Explain the suspension science, science man. Science man. I, I hardly have a lab coat either. This cutaway kind of helps demonstrate this this tech a little bit better. So we have our main piston here, a rebound uh, area ESCV uh, piston, a compression area ESCV piston, and then our catch pistons on these springs. The springs don't actually have any function other than to return the catch piston to its position, but you can imagine there's a column of oil, solid column of oil here that as the dampers or as the piston rod is passing through you get to this po portion where you're right at the end and this catch piston engages with the ESCV piston and then starts to activate this valving it has this column of oil has no choice but to push through the valving which is independently tunable compression and rebound that helps us really dial in that that nice cushy last couple inches of, of suspension travel it has a remote reservoir kind of that. the remote reservoir because of the way that technology works we couldn't put the dividing piston and the gas charge underneath so we we put it externally more surface area on this damper equals better cooling so when you're really giving it giving her the beans off road he knows giving it the i know beans. i know about the beans <laughs> you uh you get better cooling and more oil capacity and if you look on the front corner of the hood you got some trail sites you can use those to kind of point oh. the corners of your bronco and figure out exactly where you're at i didn't know that huh. Walk? Yes. I thought you were gonna get a ride oh, no. with somebody. Oh I was, no! I was following you. Coming. Oh, 
Killed it. Thanks. Made it look easy. It was pretty easy. Okay. So slightly left. Okay. Right there. Straight shot up, and then you're gonna take the next trail on the left. Okay. Right there. Hold that. Yep. Lock front and rear. I like the control. Yep. Layer in some throttle. There you go. Nicely done. Come my way just a touch. Right there. Nice. Nice. Beautiful work. Thank you. There you go. Yep. Keep it left. There you go. Just like that. It's like becoming second nature just going to turn them off to the lockers. Turn them off, turn them off. There's the jump too. Oh. This made me more excited to finish building my rally car than I did having a Bronco. Yeah. Despite running on only three hours of sleep and feeling like a zombie after two weeks of travel, this event was absolutely worth it. I am so glad I came to be able to film this experience for all of you. And the Bronco itself, even after waiting 14 months since I first placed my reservation and probably several more months to go until I can take delivery of the one I ordered, I still think it's worth it. And I cannot wait to film a full review on this new Bronco for each and every one of you to watch. Anyway, thank you Bill Stein for hosting this event and everyone here that helped orchestrate it. And I will see you guys soon with another. Bye.